I am Lizzie with Long Distance Gamers. We are a group of friends who play games remotely due to living in different states. Today I'm going to be talking about Ankh. What do I think about it? And more importantly, how do we play it remotely? Now before we get started, there are of course two different sides. The side running the game, they for sure have a copy and they play the game mostly like normal. The remote side may or may not have a copy. We will be going over how the remote side sets up and how the remote side responds to the game. So this is Ankh set up for three players. As you can see, I do have a very limited view of the table, but the most important thing to have visible is, of course, the board. So what the running side will do will be to take the cards, since they're the same for all the gods, and just set them out and send a picture to the remote side. That way they can easily see the name and what it does. The running side will also send them a picture of the board with a close-up of these Ankh powers, as well as all of the powers for all the gods in play. And the running side will also send a picture of the guardians, so that way all sides will be able to know what guardians are in play. So for setup, you of course follow the scenario rule. How you play it is, whoever's turn it is will just simply state what they're doing. So if they want to move figures, all they'll do is state that they want to move figures. The running side will go ahead and move that up one space. And then they'll say what figure they're moving and where they're moving it to. So for instance, if first player did the move figures, they would say, I'm going to move my figure from W24, one, two, three. So it'll be on to W27. And so the running side will just move it from W24 to W27. And then maybe they wanna move this one from W29 over to W10. Summon figures, you would just simply state you wanna do that. And then summon figures. So again, if we play this one, then maybe we would say, I want to summon to W25. Gain followers, you just simply state that. The running side will, of course, be moving these up every time. And you just simply gain followers. When you go to unlock an Ankh power, you will just simply state what one you are doing. So if you are in this first one, you would simply say you want to go to the Omnipresent. So that way the running side will go ahead and update you to Omnipresent. If an event gets triggered, you would just simply state it is how you're doing it. The first event, so the first player is next to this, they would simply state they want to control W20, for instance. So then the running side will go ahead and grab out one of their onks and put it in W20. For a battle, of course, that is pretty easy. You would just take this battle token and put it with whoever had played. Then the tricky part happens is playing the cards. So what I do is I keep this off to the side with the merged god on each one. So that way, say Osiris had played these cards before. So that way you would know what all has been played by each of the gods, and then you can easily decide what you want to play. If you would be in it, then you would just know, based on the picture that was sent to you at the beginning of the game, what cards you still have in hand. So then once everyone has decided, you just simply state that you've decided. And then what our group does is we just write them down on a piece of paper and hold them up to the camera. Uh, what the running side could do is send a deck of these to the remote sides because you don't need to have the exact hand to match the exact god as all of the cards are the same. But that is how you would resolve battles is you would just simply have these out available for anyone to see. Either take a picture of this and send it to everybody or hold it until everyone has said that they've made their decisions and then you can put it off to the side. And then once everyone has made their decision, so maybe Osiris wanted to play the chariots this time, you would just then find Osiris's deck, take out the chariots, and put it on his deck space. For the camels, the running side would just grab them out, and then you would just simply state as the remote side how you want to place them. So say you want to place them like this. We would utilize this utensil. So you would say that you would want to put it on W12. We would want to put it out W12's one, because this is the one side. Uh, W5, we would want to place it on our one and our two. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. So of course, W12, one, W5, one, and two. And then that would get placed. And then if you want to swap these out, you would just say, I want to swap the one with the two. And then I'll swap the four 
with the one, for instance. And that is how you resolve that. Now, once the gods are merged, it does play the exact same as it would in person. Of course, with this, you would just simply pull out the one that is taken. So say Isis is the one that is merged with Osiris. So you would just pull this out and pull all of Isis's stuff away and then just put the merged with right next to Osiris and then taking a picture of that and sending it to the running side so that way you can always tell what the powers are and just place that back like that. And then the game continues on just like it would in normal play. Of course the running side will be updating the devotion track as needed and if you get a guardian it still functions the same with the running side of course adding it to your supply. Now the remote sides will keep track of how many followers they have so that way they can easily tell without having to look at the board too much as well as they would keep track of which Ankh power they have activated. The biggest difference with the setup and how you play is numbering these. I did use a labeler so that way you can easily pull these up without damaging the board but it is essential to be able to play remotely. You could also just use slips of paper in each spot but then that makes the board uh, if it shifts those papers can shift so I just use a labeler just to make it a lot easier. I did uh, the delta east and west so it mirrors the scenario book a little bit better but you could also just number them one through however many there are. Okay so that is how you play Ankh remotely. As you can see, it is much like in-person play. The biggest issue is movement on the board, which that is essentially solved just by numbering them and labeling them. As far as what I think about gameplay, I do like how the battles resolve. You have a card that you resolve out and then you keep it so that everyone can know what you have played and what you could potentially play in the next one. I do really enjoy that. I do enjoy the upgrading of the specific onks and then getting a guardian. I do wish that everybody could get a guardian. Something we have talked about doing for the guardians is to house rule them. So you would have two level ones and then in a three player game uh, you would put one token in each one and then which whenever the first one is claimed that player would then get to decide what piece to bring in. Uh, so if you have an A and a B guardian whoever gets the first one so say they get the a they could then choose to bring out a second of the b so that way they would be the only ones with that specific guardian then that also still allows everybody a chance to get a guardian for each level and it gives a slight benefit for being the first one still so you still want to focus on that but it doesn't necessarily cause you to have to focus on that first only. And it also eliminates being just eked out. So if you were just one turn away from being able to unlock a Nonk power, it would not be fun to not get a guardian, especially being beat by just one turn. So that's what we have talked about doing. As far as merging of the gods, it's interesting. I'm not sure I like it entirely because it's just so weird. So I do want to play a little bit more with that. Uh, it seems to be that if there is first and second place is super close and then third for a three player game of course and then third is super far behind that second place then gets pulled way back and they have to really struggle to then beat the first player however if all three are really close together then the two that merge generally will win so i'm not sure how that could work but i want to play that a little bit more especially in a three-player game setting because that can cause such swingingness with it. Once we do play it a lot more, we will be putting out a Fresh Thoughts, which is our review, which will have more of what we think about the game with more plays. This is just trying to give you an idea of how to play the game remotely. But until next time, just remember to have fun, be present, and be you. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you find value in our content, please like, comment, or subscribe. Let a friend or family member know that we exist. Help us spread our channel and bring remote gaming to a table near you. Thank you very much, and have a great day.